thinking about doing a bit of spring cleaning to your investment portfolio? At ETF Market Insights, we got you covered. Check out these exciting episodes curated specifically for the DIY investor. Special guest speakers and insightful industry experts will provide you with the information and education you need to confidently manage your own portfolios. You won't want to miss these shows. Check out ETFMarketInsights.com for more information. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the alert button so you never miss an episode. Hi, Larry Berman here. Late Friday afternoon once again, about an hour before the market close. And uh, looks like, you know, markets are taking it on the chin this week. A dramatic volatility reversal on what seemed like uh, a more dovish uh, uh, Jay Powell. Uh, and at, with some afterthought, maybe they're not going to get the job done. So a lot of uncertainty. Volatility's up. The volatility curves inverted. When we look through all our breadth indicators in our Pro I series this week, um, we're, we're as oversold as we are or have been at pretty much most extremes. Not every indicator, um, but but many of them certainly. The ones that's standing out really are the seasonality indicators that still say for the next six months things don't look great. But on a short-term tactical basis, we're oversold enough that we should get a bit of a bounce in the coming weeks. But keep in mind, if we are in a bear market, we think we are, trend down, bounces fail, right? So we call them dead cat bounces or, or failed rallies or, or what have you. So, you know, that's the environment we're in. Wish I had better news, but, you know, we're just getting started here. So when you think about, well, when's the end? What's the beginning of the reason to buy and get aggressive and we, we need the Fed? And until the Fed is our friend, they'll be working against us. Gotta be at least for the next six months, then we'll see. What I think we may see this month and, and one of the reasons why the markets could rally in the next month or so, again, rally to a lower high, is that the boil comes off inflationary pressures and, and we start seeing the rates of change of inflation start to cool. So I think that's, that's something we can look forward to in the coming weeks um, and, and months. Um, so we get a bit of a bounce, but again, failed rally. So you know, that's kind of what's on my radar this week. And we're, we're primarily through earnings period, for the most part, pretty good companies that have had high PEs that miss, taken out behind the, the shed and, and beaten silly. A lot of the Arc K names, which have been the, you know, the, the meme for, for this bubble and, and, and burst, a lot of them are getting interesting. Not all of them, certainly. Tesla, I still think, is crazy overvalued here. Neo being one of our favorite picks there. But we're in a bear market. So no matter what name we like, we're going to get volatility with it. And I think, you know, you buy some of those names on pullbacks, like a Neo over a Tesla at this point. Um, I, I'm not fist pounding bullish on anything other than, you know, for trades here. The mining stocks have pulled back, though that looks interesting. We nibbled Friday in, in some of those where we had been cutting them weeks ago, bought some uranium uh, chemical today. Uh, so the handful of things that we've added to the portfolio, some semiconductors, very oversold here. You got to like that sector, big picture, not the high multiple high price names, but some of the more reasonably priced uh, names, Intel. Again, a stock that, that probably should trade 20, 30 percent higher um, as, as you know, in the next year or so. Uh, Got to love that name. So, um, yeah, that's where we are. Bull bear picks of the week. Again, be cautious market overall, but we can play for a rally here. So how do you want to play that? If you're cautious, how do you play for that rally? You do it with options. Option premium is very expensive, so to buy calls here aren't going to be cheap. Um, writing puts, very attractive right now. You don't get much upside, but you get a lot of premium. 
So some of those things right here, depending on how conservative you want to play it, sell the put to buy the call. We call those a risk reversal, meaning you get to buy the stock lower or you participate in the upside because there's a skew to the put call ratio. You can structure that so it doesn't cost you anything. Some of those might look interesting um, for some investors here who are looking for you know, a bounce over the coming weeks or month or so. Um, again, generally be cautious here. Fixed income, I'm not gonna go recommend anyone go buy bonds at this point, but if you're tactical in nature, the long bond at this point looks really, really attractive. The 10 to 30 part of the Euro US curve, I keep nibbling here. It's a little painful short term, but uh, you know, at three and a quarter US tens and longs, I think if a recession is coming down the road, that, that looks really, really attractive. Have a good week, everyone. Thinking about doing a bit of spring cleaning to your investment portfolio? At ETF Market Insights, we got you covered. Check out these exciting episodes curated specifically for the DIY investor. Special guest speakers and insightful industry experts will provide you with the information and education you need to confidently manage your own portfolios. You won't want to miss these shows. Check out ETFMarketInsights.com for more information. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the alert button so you never miss an episode.